what's up you guys welcome back uh so i actually originally recorded this thinking it was going to be all one video uh but i decided to break it up into two pieces since it got so long so if you haven't seen part one go check that out that's the local privilege escalation this is part two where we're going to do the remote code execution let's go all right so now we're going to do some really really cool stuff because we're going to use the same exploit uh but this time we're going to use a different proof of concept that we can leverage for remote code execution so this will allow us to actually ex execute code at the system level from um, a different system. So no longer are we looking at just like a local privest technique. And so if we look at this, we can kind of look at their example. So they've got a Kali Linux box that runs the Python script and they specify the domain of a domain user along with the password of that domain user. So this could be like our D Lillard user account that we showed in the last video. Um, and this is, you know, like a low-level intern. It doesn't have any administrator rights at all. It's just a standard user in the domain. We know that we've compromised their password through phishing or whatever whatever method we use. And then we point it at the target we want to hit, which in this case is 1.10 for them. But this is probably like a domain controller. It doesn't have to be. You could run this against any Windows system you want to. But obviously, if you can get it against a domain controller, that's going to be the most uh, fruitful for you. And then finally, they specify a path here to a remote DLL file. So notice this is on 1.215 and they're hitting 1.10. So likely this is like a, uh, uh, the IP address of their attacker Kali system and it's probably just hosting some sort of file share and inside that file share, they've got this DLL file. So we're gonna need a couple things. Obviously, we're gonna need to know the username, password combination of the user on the domain, which we've already compromised. It's dlillard password123. And then we're gonna need to know the IP address of the domain controller. And finally, we're gonna need to generate this DLL file. There's one other caveat to this too, is you have to be using the developer's version here of mpacket. Um, so if you're using like the actual default mpacket, this isn't going to work. You're going to need to install his. So follow these steps, that should fix that for you, and then we should be ready for the code. So let's minimize this guy, and let's look at our environment. So in our case, we've got this Kali Linux system here on the right, not too exciting, and then here on the left, we have a domain controller. So I'm gonna open this guy up. LeBron James is our domain admin. I'm gonna sign in as him. And let's just make sure we're actually on a domain controller, minimize all this junk open up users and computers. We can also open up a PowerShell window. And you can see we've got 80 users in here. Perfect. We've also got PowerShell. If I do an IP config, looks like our IP address is this guy right there. Let's copy that down. We've actually got two, so let's make sure. Cool. I can talk to 100010. So this is kind of simulating as if I was an attacker that maybe I dropped an implant of some kind. Maybe I dropped a laptop that's running Kali Linux, or maybe I dropped a Raspberry Pi on the network and I'm using that as my way in. Obviously, you can also use this through other means. Maybe you've compromised a host externally and you're pivoting through that host to get inside the network. I'm not gonna talk about pivoting techniques or any of that. In this case, in our, in our simulation here, we're just local on the same subnet even, and we can just communicate back and forth between our Kali system and the domain controller. So let's start by getting things ready. So one of the first things we're gonna need is that DLL file. So to do and generate a DLL file, I'm actually gonna use a cheat sheet that I have for MSF Venom. In the last video, we used a DLL file to create an, a local user account. But in this case, I wanna actually do a reverse shell because um, that's a little bit more fun. And you can use this cheat sheet if you'd like to. It's just a, it's out on my blog where you can grab the commands that you're gonna need. So in our case, we've got stage payloads for Windows and interpreter binary, x64. Let me copy this guy. And let's go back into our Kali system. And I always like to throw it into like a notepad window or something first, it makes it a little bit easier to edit. Plus you have it for later if you need. So instead of F of EXE, we're gonna export that as a DLL. So I'm also gonna change that to .dll and check the rest of this, reverse TCP. Everything's looking good there. We'll change our L host to 10.00, whatever my IP is, 188. 
And then our L port, we'll do .443. Great, let's copy all this. And we'll generate our reverse shell payload. Perfect, so we have our own DLL file. If we hit LS, we've got that in here. So next, we need to be able to host this file up through an SMB share. Uh, the easiest way by far to do that is using Impacket. We can use Impacket's SMB file server, or uh, SMB file server. So what we're gonna do is, inside my blog, I've actually got another cheat sheet here for file transfers and Windows. And in that, we've got the syntax needed for the SMB server. So I'm gonna copy that down, throw this into a notepad, and essentially, we just need to provide it two flags. The first is going to be a share name, which I'm just going to call share. And then the path, which I'm just going to say print working directory. And that's going to execute first. And so whatever directory we run this in, it's going to be like, okay, cool, we'll share that one up. And boom. So let's clear this out. We have that file in there. We'll run this. And it, permission denied, run it as sudo. Okay. So now we have an SMB share being shared. <laughs> so cool. At this point, I think we're ready to get things going. So let's go out to GitHub and we're going to pull down the actual exploit. So if you haven't got it yet, you can just copy this down and do a git clone. I've actually already got it. So if you go into opt, you'll see I've got both his version of Impacket as well as the CVE. So again, you'll need to install that version in order for this to work. But once you do, should be able to change into here, and you've actually got the Python script right there. So I'm going to look back at his GitHub page, and let's look at the example syntax that he used. So let's copy this, and we'll pull this into Notepad. So he's just saying, hey, we're going to run the script, so I'm going to do sudo python3, run the script, and then... We're going to specify the name of the domain, which in our case is MBA. And then the domain user, which we compromised a user account named D. Lillard, who had a password of password123. The IP address of our target, which is 10.00.10. .10. And then finally, we're going to list out the SMB share, which, and it looks like that's in quotes here. It's kind of confusing because the new lines get separated here by dashes. I'm not typing that dash. Uh, but then the path to our SMB share, which in our case is 10.00.188. That's the IP of our Kali system. Slash share. And then the name of the file, which I believe was shell x64 DLL. Let's go double check that. Uh, come into here. Change into print nightmare. Uh, shell dash x64 dll perfect i'm also going to load up msf console because we're going to need that to catch our shell i think we're looking pretty good with this command let's copy all this down come back here let's just make sure we look at it it looks fine so we're going to run the python script we're going to say mbad lillard with his password we're going to target the domain controller and then we're going to specify the share that we have running right here Cool. So now we're going to use exploit multi handler. And we need to set our payload to match the payload we generated. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to set our L host to be 10.00.188. And we're going to set our L port to 443. These are all the same values that we specified here. Right? So we've got all that. Now we can just run this. It'll start our listener, and I'm going to scoot this over so it looks nice and neat on one line. Cool. I think we're in good shape. We've got our listener and interpreter listener running. We've got our SMB server hosting the file share. Now we just run the exploit. Let's see if this works. Connection failed. That did not work. That was pretty anticlimactic, I must admit. Let's see why. It failed pretty quick. I have a feeling... When I ran this earlier, yeah. So I ran this earlier and it crashed the print spooler. So this is a great example of how to mitigate this attack. If you don't have your print spooler running, 
this is not going to work. I'm going to start this up. By default, Print Spooler is going to be running on all Windows systems. If we did a reboot of the server, this would also restart that. But now that that's running, let's run this again. And check that out. Meterpreter session open. We hop into shell. We do a who am I, NT authority system. We do an IT config. And we are definitely on 10.0.0.10. So... That's pretty great, guys. This exploit, super easy to run, not much work really needed. To recap what we did, we ran this exploit. It goes out and it connects to the print spooler at the address we specified. It finds the exploitable uh, process, and then it, go ahead, it goes ahead and it injects the malicious DLL file that we have hosted here on this remote SMB share. So you can see when it does this piece, we get an incoming connection from the server where it authenticates successfully and then it pulls down the share. After that, that's injected in the process, the process running that system. Here we are, we get interpreter reverse shell. You can exit this out, do fun stuff like hash dump. Now we've got the hashes of the domain, including the KRB TGT ticket. If you've seen that before, you may know we could use that to do a golden ticket attack. And now we've got persistence for the entirety of the domain. It's really, really hard to come back once this hash has been leaked. So that's it. This is a, it's a really dangerous attack, obviously. Um, pretty crazy, pretty, pretty crazy exploit. And there's not a whole lot we can do right now other than just disable our print spoolers and wait for Microsoft to, to release a patch that works. So hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything else that uh, you guys have questions about or anything related to this, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I do hope you'll hit the like button. That'll help out the YouTube, YouTube algorithm. And uh, yeah, I'll just catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out.